Bronchiectasis Bronchiectasis is a disorder in which there is permanent dilation or widening of the tubes carrying air in and out of the lungs. These tubes are called as bronchi and they are actually the division of our trachea. The bronchi enters into each side of the lungs and further divides into smaller airways called as the bronchioles. The bronchi and bronchioles are an important part of our respiratory system which helps in carrying the oxygen to the lungs and when they are damaged the lungs may not be able to function properly. Now you may wonder as to what causes bronchiectasis. The most important and commonest cause of bronchiectasis is repeated severe lung infection. Chronic infections with tuberculosis or those which causes pneumonia can dilate the bronchi due to the damage of the bronchial wall. Bronchiectasis does not develop until and unless there is repeated trauma to the bronchial tissues and is thus a chronic condition with acute exacerbations. The risk factors which can predispose a person of acquiring bronchiectasis are Cystic fibrosis, a genetic condition that affects cells that produces mucus, sweat and gastric juices. Chronic inflammatory lung diseases, immunodeficiency, repeated aspiration of food and other particles into the windpipe, allergies, alcoholism and substance abuse and congenital problems. The risk of getting bronchiectasis increases with age, especially in a predisposed person. Let us now discuss what exactly happens in this disorder. This disorder occurs after repeated infection and inflammation of the bronchi occurs. What happens here is that due to the repeated infection, inflammatory changes takes place. This inflammatory changes damages the bronchial wall as well as the hair-like structures called cilia of the bronchi. Now this small hair-like structure have a very important role of moving the microbes, debris and mucus out of the bronchi. With repeated inflammatory changes there is repeated damage to the bronchial wall and cilia which are then permanently damaged and replaced by edematous fibrotic tissues. Also, since the cilia is destroyed, there is nothing to move the mucus in the upward direction, which leads to accumulation of mucus inside the lungs, allowing infective organisms to enter the lungs. The bronchial wall becomes dilated with all the mucus and yet have a narrow lumen as the wall is filled with mucus and inflammatory infiltrate. Air may enter the bronchi easily in this case, but exhaling becomes difficult through it. Remember, bronchiectasis by definition means dilation of the bronchial wall and not narrowing. The characteristic feature of this disorder includes permanent dilation of bronchi destruction of bronchial wall and impaired drainage of bronchial secretions. Morphologically, there are three primary types of bronchiectasis. These are cylindrical bronchiectasis, varicose bronchiectasis and cystic bronchiectasis. In cylindrical bronchiectasis, there is smooth, uniform enlargement of bronchi. Thus, the normal progression of narrowing of the airways distally is lost and the bronchi looks like one long tube of equal diameter. There is no extra pouching or twisting of the bronchi which is seen in the other types of bronchiectasis. And since it is still like a long tube, it is also called as the tubular type of bronchiectasis. In varicose bronchiectasis, the bronchi is irregularly dilated and constricted, thus giving a varicose appearance or a twisted kind of an appearance. 
the bronchi looks like a twisted road with narrowing in some places while widening in other areas in cystic type of bronchiectasis there is sac like formation of the bronchi due to dilation the appearance is like that of a bunch of grapes this is usually the rarest type of bronchiectasis a patient may have all three forms of bronchiectasis simultaneously now coming to the symptoms of bronchiectasis as we already discussed the bronchi is dilated and filled with mucus which causes chronic cough in the patient wheezing or whistling sound is produced in the airways as the lumen is narrowed and the person will suffer from shortness of breath due to the same the patient usually will have difficulty in exhaling rather than inhaling and the finger nails may curve downwards as the tissues under the nails becomes thicker due to lower oxygen concentration this curving of the finger nails is called as clubbing of finger nails the patient may lose weight and suffer from chronic fatigue during an exacerbation the patient may have fever chills worsening of shortness of breath night sweats and increased cough and sputum the diagnosis of bronchiectasis is made by chest ct scan x-ray and blood and sputum test lung function test is a test in which the patient have to blow into the machine through the mouth which then provides information about the various capacities of the lungs and the airways a bronchoscopy may be performed wherein a tube with a light and camera will be inserted through the mouth or nose and then down the trachea into the lungs it helps in visualizing the lung and the airways directly coming to the treatment of bronchiectasis it cannot be cured but rather can be managed effectively the main aim of treatment of bronchiectasis involves prevention of infections and exacerbations this requires a combination of therapies to treat the patient now the patient usually requires treatment only during the flare ups the patient will be started with antibiotics specific to the infective organism oral or iv antibiotics are prescribed depending on the severity and type of infection while inhaled antibiotics may be prescribed in severe cases macrolides which are a type of antibiotics with anti inflammatory properties may be prescribed in severe conditions long term antibiotics may be prescribed in case of three or more infections a year a decongestant and a mucolytic which is a mucus thinning medication is usually prescribed for the patient to allow the mucus to be coughed out of the lung easily and to clear the airways the clearer the lungs are the lesser are the chances of infection and complications of bronchiectasis a physiotherapist may provide chest physiotherapy postural drainage and various other methods to clear the lungs breathing and coughing exercises will be taught to help the patient breathe effectively while coughing and clearing out mucus physiotherapist may also teach patient to use various mucus thinning devices patient is kept well hydrated to prevent thickening of mucus inside the bronchi thus facilitating its expulsion nebulization therapy also helps in the same way a patient who does not respond well to medications may need to undergo surgical treatment of bronchiectasis surgery is done in patients who have only an area of the bronchi affected who does not respond to medications and who suffer from recurrent infections decreasing patient's quality of life this may be done to remove all the infectious organisms which may be present on the damaged part surgical treatment involves removal of a part of the affected area 
called as pulmonary resection surgery. There are three types of pulmonary resection done for a patient with bronchiectasis. They are lobectomy, segmentectomy and pneumonectomy. Lobectomy is a surgical procedure in which a lobe of the lungs will be removed. The lungs are anatomically divided into lobes out of which the affected lobe will be easily removed. In segmentectomy, a segment or part of the lobe is removed and is also called as the wedge resection surgery. In pneumonectomy, the affected lung will be removed to improve patient's quality of life. Patients who have widespread bronchiectasis may require lung transplantation for survival. Some tips to manage bronchiectasis at home. Quit smoking. Take vaccination for influenza virus and pneumococcal infection as prescribed by the doctor. Take your antibiotics on time and stay hydrated to prevent thickening of the mucus. For more such information, kindly like the video and subscribe my channel.